Hello friends, welcome to this channel. This is DG Solutions. Today, allow me to share to you the numerical side of the CPM or what we call the critical path analysis. And this critical path that was identified in the entire network we mean after going through the series of activities from beginning in between activities and the end activities of your going through that that will be the entire network this critical path is the longest path but this is also the shortest time allowable for the completion of the project and uh, therefore if the project is to be completed in the shortest time all activities on the identified critical path must be started as soon as possible we must take consideration or take full attention to this path if we want to finish the entire project before or after so we can manipulate this critical path therefore this is called critical activities again uh, if you want to reduce the duration of your project you must reduce at least one of the critical path activity and uh, if you want also to delay the project you increase the duration of these critical activities the other activities aside from the critical path activities are called non-critical activity and in this non-critical activities we have the so-called slack time and slack is the amount of time by which the start of an activity may be delayed without affecting the duration of the, the entire project and take note that the critical activity has no slack again to reduce the overall project time uh, it would require more resources it means extra cost okay more resources to reduce the time taken by the critical activities to complete so you have to invest to accelerate the activity now for the scheduling of activities we have the so-called earliest time or the TE and the latest time or the TL so before you can determine the critical path in a network it is necessary for us to find the ET or the TE or the earliest time as noted here TE and the latest time or TL okay so in each event we have to identify the TE and the TL to be able to do that uh, we introduce the what we call forward pass computations so in this way we can calculate the earliest time so we have these steps for the step one uh, begin from the start event uh, our event is started at one and it goes to event two and three and in between event for instance one and two we have here an activity a which gives us a five days duration in between two and three event we have activity b which give us a two days duration and for our forward pass 
computation, we always put uh, the TE or the earliest time equals to zero. That will be always for the starting event. Then after uh, designating zero for the starting event, we go now to the next event so before you we can move to the next event in our case in this figure event 2 we have this activity a and it gives us five dates so to be able for us to get the te or the earliest time at event 2 we are going to add the earliest time before the activity so here we have t is equals to zero for event one and the activity is five so zero plus five so it will give us the earliest time at event two of five okay and we repeat again the same procedure we go back to step three so in this case uh, again we started at 2 so the TE at 2 is 5 and the activity uh, between event 2 and 3 is 2 days so 5 plus 2 so the earliest time will be 7 so this is the forward pass computation so it, it moves from right to left okay and uh, we have also does the uh, backward pass computations so the other one is the forward pass this one is the backward pass this is also to calculate the TL or the uh, latest time okay so here in our drawing we are given already the uh, earliest time so we have event 1 zero days so that's always be the case using forward pass and this data wa were uh, uh, taken by using the forward pass computation for instance in event 1 to 2 the TE at event 2 is 2 days because the TE at 1 event 1 is 0 and the activity is 2 days so that will be 0 plus 2 now for event 3 that will be 3 days because the TE at 1 is 0 and the activity at B is 3 days so that will be 0 plus 10 will give us 3 days now going to event 4 you have 2 activities now before event 4 that is C and D and C is 2 days and D is also 2 days so since that at event 2 the T is 2 days you have to add 2 plus 2 and it will give you 4 days for TE from event 2 to 4 and from event 2 3 to 4 that will be 3 plus 2 and it will give you 5 days now <coughs> You have here uh, two TE at event four. Okay, so now we introduce to you the backward pass communication. So it is actually uh, going backward from right to left. The forward pass is from left to right, and the backward pass is from right to left. So we begin from end event so the end event here is in this figure is 4 and then we move towards the start events okay the start event here is 1 okay so for the step 2 the latest time or the TL for the last event is the earliest time so uh, in our case uh, the last event is uh, the T's are 4 and 5 so you have 2 uh, I mean er earlier or earliest event that is 4 and 5 so the TL will be the TE of the, the, the last event so 
you have here to it's either four and five and step three go to the next event if there is an incoming activity subtract the value of tl to the okay so so you see so what are we going to do is that uh we will choose the the biggest uh event the earliest time event or uh, on our event four since we have two here four and five so we choose five so that will be our tl okay so going back from right to left so it is marked here as five days in mark in red so i choose five instead of four now for the event two going backward to be able for us to get the tl for event two we subtract five to two so it will give us three days and for event three we subtract five to two and it will give us also three days event three tl is three days okay and from event two to one to, to get the tl we subtract three days to the activity two days same thing that we did as we have uh, solved for TL from event 4 to 2 and 4 to 3. So it will give us 3 minus 2, it will give us 1 day. And this 3 days event TL, uh, 3 days on event 3, will be subtracted to activity 3, which is 3 minus 3, and it will give us 0 day. So that's how we get the TL. So the arrive value always is TL for that event. If there are more than one incoming activities, take the minimum T value. So in this case, we will take uh, the minimum value of TE, which is the zero value. And we this how we we perform a backward pass computation. We repeat again the same procedure from step 2 until we get the start event which is here is 1. Okay. Now, for the calculation of your uh, ES, EF, LF, and LS. Okay. Again, uh, we are using now here annotation ES for the earliest start. Okay. The earliest that an activity can begin. Uh, we assume that all preceding activities have been completed. So we call this as ES. And we have also the EF. To be able to get the EF, you must know the ES and you add the activity time. And for the LF or the latest finish, uh, the latest that an activity can finish and that change the project completion time, that is LF. And the latest start is the subtraction of your LF, the latest finish, to the activity time. So you subtract LF uh, minus activity time. And we have here a rectangle for us to easily remember. So we place ES on the upper part and EF. So starting event or the earliest start and the earliest uh, finish okay and below are the latest finish which uh, on, on the same uh, on the same uh, or on the same side with es and also on the same side with EFR uh, is lf okay so this is for mnemonic so you, you we can uh, uh, easily remember okay now the non critical activities have some is lack of flow as we have discussed earlier so here we determine the float and slack times by the way again uh, slack times uh, are only on the non-critical activities. 
So we have here the notation, the duration of activity, the earliest effective time, and so on and so forth. And uh, the total float, we can get total float by uh, subtracting ES from LS. So in this uh, rectangular box, we just consider the data here. So you subtract LS minus ES or TF is equal to TL minus T. Okay, so those are the things that we should uh, remember to compute for the total flow. Okay, and so here we have again ES, EF, LS, LF, and SLAP for the difference in time. Now, let uh, us have this example. So we are to get the ES and the EF times. Okay, the earliest start and the uh, earliest uh, finish time. Okay, so these are the examples. So you have here a network. This is the graphical representation of a certain or uh, a project. Okay, it is uh, being presented in a network. So you have here the blue uh, circle which is for our events and the arrow will be for the activity for example here we have activity A uh, we have a value of 6, B, 8, C, 5, F, 15, G, 17, I, 6, H, 9, J, 12, D, 13, and E, 9 so those are the values of the activities so in this case we set TE or the start of our event the TE value okay as zero so we place on the first box the, the value of zero because this is all zero and then to get the other part this is our ES and the earliest start and the earliest finish will be 6 because 0 plus 6 will be 6 and also 0 plus 8 will be 8 0 plus 5 will be 5 okay and then we go to the next event in this in this uh, activity A uh, we are going to go to the next event you'll know that you have a 6 value here for your EF that will be the ES for this next uh, boxes here you have here 6 and 6 also and in this case for this event or for where activity B uh, is performed so you have also EF as 8 this will be the e the ES of the next uh, activity so you place there 8 and also here you place here 5 now to be able to get the EF we just add 6 to the activity so 16 I mean 6 plus 15 that is 21 okay and 6 plus 17 that is 23 8 plus 13 that is 21 5 plus 9 that is 14 okay so 21 which is the EF will become the ES of the next uh, activity so we place there 21 and also here 23 here uh, there were 2 we have 21 and 14 so we will get the highest one so we take 21 here okay so this will now be the ES of these activities and for the EF again 21 plus 9 that will be 30 then 23 plus 6 that is 29 21 plus 12 that is 33 okay so this is a forward pass where we get the ES and the EF okay 
the earliest start time and the earliest finish time okay and uh, now uh, the since there were three uh, EF we choose the largest one so the projects the entire projects EF is 33 this is the earliest finish time 33 okay and then we also want to get the ls and lf in our box in our rectangular box that will be the lower part so how we do we find the ls and lf we use now the backward pass okay so since we have identified that 33 is our uh, EF, earliest finish, so we place here you know, this. Do you remember the uh, mnemonic that the upper part of your uh, rectangle are ES and EF, and the lower part is LS? and lf so 33 will be our lf here the latest finish and also from this uh, activity i we use also 33 and here 33 so how do you now get the ls so to be able for us to solve for ls uh, we just have to uh, subtract 33 to the activity or you subtract 9 from 33 and it will give us 24 here 33 minus 6 it will give us 27 33 minus 12 will give us 21 so again this will be carried here this e, uh, ls will become the lf on the next uh, uh, box wherein we are using the backward pass so if this is 24 it will be written here 24 this is also 27 and this here is 21 and here is uh, also 21 now to be able for us to solve for ls again you subtract 24 to 15 it will give us 18 same as here, 27 minus 17, that will be 10. 21 minus 13, 8. 21 minus 9, that will be 12. So this is now the LS. And this will become the LF here. On the A activity. So it will be carried here. It will become, uh, yeah, this 18, 8 in this uh, part. And here is 12. And there is 10 so you just uh, place it here so 10 10 8 8 12 12 so to get the LS you just subtract 6 from 10 or 10 minus 6 that will be 4 8 minus 8 that will be 0 12 minus 5 that will be 7 so so easy now for us to get the uh, critical path so where will be uh, our where will uh, be our path uh, the considered critical path where is it okay so the critical path can be uh, solved by actually we all already have the critical path here, but here we are going to present to you the flow. No? Because uh, the critical path here is, we is, is from this point where in we have the, uh, our LS is zero here. So it will be this path, uh, activity B and activity D and activity J so this will be our critical path you'll notice that it has the same uh, 
ES and LS same and uh, if you are to subtract all of that it will give you zero so the value of all of those things of the float are zero so that that is your critical part okay so this is what will uh, i will present to you in this next slide in which uh, we are now solving for the float for this box you have 3 because 24 minus 21 equals 3 and for this one is 27 minus 23 and that is 4 here 0 okay and then we have also 9 minus 6 3 10 minus 6 is 4 and here 8 minus 8 is 0 here 12 minus 5 is 7 we have here 3 minus 0 is 3 and 0 minus 0 is 0 7 minus 0 is 7 so this part where um, there is a box in color blue in which the float is 0 these are the identified activities of the critical path so that will be now your critical path so this is it so the critical path are B, D and J activity okay so thank you this is how you determine the critical path of your entire network or your entire project activities thank you so much for watching